This short presentation introduces you to the main principles of e-education on the Virtual Linguistics Campus. In other words, teaching, learning and assessment in the 21st century. The Virtual Linguistics Campus applies a holistic e-educational model to all its teaching and learning scenarios. This model combines e-learning that is, the self-guided process of online content delivery and content acquisition with e-teaching, modern in class, as well as online scenarios of practicing, presenting and discussion, and e-assessment from flanking, diagnostic or flanking, summative assessment to formative assessment during all VLC classes. Central to the model is a repository of multimedia linguistic content that recently has been supplemented by video material as a special system of student support. The framework, that is, the platform that controls and administers all these activities and components is the Virtual Linguistics Campus itself. Now, in order to understand the e-education principles that are applied on the Virtual Linguistics Campus, we have to consider the central components and activities of traditional teaching and learning beforehand. In general, we can say that teaching and learning is based on two central components, a component of content delivery and content acquisition, and a second part that is dedicated to practicing and deepening what you've learned beforehand. Traditionally, we have the following activities that are associated with these two components. In phase one, we are involved in the phase of content delivery and content acquisition, where dozens, sometimes even hundreds of students have to gather at the same time, uh, in the same place with one teacher who delivers in some form or another the content. Well, and then in the second phase, they enter into a self-guided process of practicing on the basis of homework, additional exercises, deepening, and so on and so forth. Now, in the VLC model, these two activities have been swapped. Phase one is now a self-guided phase of content acquisition where students are left on their own. And then in the second phase, we meet in class. We meet in order to practice, in order to deepen, in order to apply remedial action, in order to analyze data, discuss things, and so on and so forth. This model has become known as the inverted classroom model or the flipped mastery education model. And this is exactly what the Virtual Linguists Campus has been applying for several years. Now, what do we need in order for this model to work? Well, we first of all need specific online materials. In the case of the Virtual Linguistics Campus, as I've already said, this is multimedia material and recently video material that now can be accessed on via YouTube so that students can access their classes even on modern smartphones. And for the second phase, the new in-class phase, we of course need a redefinition, redefinition of the teacher role. And also we need new ways of in-class teaching because now the frontal delivery of content would be something that is not needed anymore. Now the benefit of this model is pretty clear. Learners are now fully autonomous. They're free to learn wherever and whenever they like. They can apply their own learning strategies and learning speed. They're totally self-instructed. And for the teacher, we have now gained what some people call a liberation or free your lecture because we can get rid of information about how to get the credits, information about uh, how the classes are organized and teachers thus have far more time than ever before for their students in the in-class phase. Now, what's it like studying on the Virtual Linguistics Campus? Here you see a typical class now, each class consists of a number of units, e-learning units, 
uh, one is the equivalent of a traditional um, 90 minutes lecture. Now these sessions can be subdivided as follows. We have a number of sessions or e-learning units that are supported by multimedia plus e-lectures. You can see that here these symbols indicate that these five units are uh, not only multimedial um, e-learning units but also um, e-lecture supported um, units. Well then we have a number of units that do not have e-lectures. There are several reasons for not using e-lectures here. For example, the content is self-explanatory in a multimedial way. We simply do not need e-lectures in all these cases. Well, the re remaining ones in this class, again, have e-lectures to support the content. Now, what does it mean for phase one? For the phase of self-guided content acquisition and content delivery. Well, all students now have permanent access to all learning materials. On the VLC, the multimedia content. On the VLC, the direct links into YouTube and wherever they are on their smartphones, they can learn, they can access the content. Well, and they are supported in their learning process. It does not simply suffice to make the content available. We have to exert some sort of control. For example, formative assessment is one of these control mechanisms where students have to answer questions about the content and these questions are forwarded uh, to their class instructors. We have implemented award systems where you can achieve scores and we have integrated quizzes into the e-learning units so that the students are stimulated to actually work with the material. Let's now look at the second phase, the phase of in-class teaching. In-class teaching is now completely different than in traditional scenarios. It follows the activity of content delivery and content acquisition and is thus supplementary and no, no longer fundamental. It is now dedicated to practicing, using exercise material, to data analysis, to discussion, but it is not really used for traditional teaching. Permanent evaluations of the VLC classes by our students have clearly indicated to us that the mere repetition of the content that the students have already um, accessed online would be something they do not like at all. Now this supplementary character of the in-class phase opens new horizons for our students. In standard degree programs, for example, that is our teacher students, our BA students, our students from our international MA program, linguistics and web technology, for example, they study the content in any case online in this self-guided activity. But they have regular in-class meetings with their tutors in which they practice, analyze data, and discuss topic related issues. So this would be the scenario, phase one, self-guided content acquisition, phase two, in-class meeting, a cooperative in-class meet meeting dedicated to discussions, let's say. Students who are on online programs, such as in our online master web development and linguistics, or students who spend a year abroad, students who are ill, they do exactly the same as the residential students in phase one, self-guided content acquisition. But what about phase two? Well, since they do not have any in-class meeting anymore, they will be given online material via the Virtual Linguistics Campus, for example, special sets of data to be analyzed, or they will meet their students in web conferences. Of course, both have permanent contact with their fellow students via the um, VLC integrated and the worldwide social networks. Thus, there is almost no difference between resident students who are in Marburg and online students. Online students simply join their Marburg fellow students in the same class. Since they are physically 
not present, they deliver, for example, presentations via web conferencing and are given special material for practicing and analysis. This system of combining online and resident students in the same class has been successful since the early days of the Virtual Linguistics Campus in 2001.